All right, so to start, I've just removed my coils. My son's playing with his toy lawnmower, so you're gonna hear that in the background. I just removed my coils, and I'm gonna go around and remove all these screws. You've got three down here through the middle, and then they're all the way around the perimeter of the valve cover. So with all the screws removed, you're gonna pop these clips off of your timing case cover. It's just a little plastic black cover up here. With that off, you can kind of pry this back just a little bit. Um, I think you're probably gonna to wanna to take out this plastic air stuff. I, mine's actually busted up, so. Speaking of air, I wanna do an intake on this where I can actually hear the turbo. The turbo is not very loud on this car. There's a lot of muffling that makes that the case. Um, I put a cone filter on it when I first got it. It sounded really good, but the car ran terribly, so I took it off and put the stock air box on. And from what I've read, you can't really beat the stock airbox for performance. I just want it to sound louder. So comment below if you know how to make this car sound louder. I just want to hear the turbo. Um, it sounds really good when you can hear it. So I just want to hear it, and I want to hear it loud, and I want it to sound awesome. Call it rice, but I love it. Back here, you have your crankcase breather, and uh, all you're going to do is remove this screw clamp back here and slide it off the back. Just slide that out of the way. And from here, you should be able to pull your valve cover off. Now, you should never really have to pry a valve cover off. It may be a little bit stuck, but I've done that once before and it ruined the valve cover, I actually cracked it. There we go. That is off. The engine looks pretty good. These engines build up sludge, and if you see it up here, you got a problem. But this one looks good. So I also have a camshaft something seal that I hear you need to replace. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know where that is or where it goes, but I'm gonna find out and I'll teach you. Uh, this can also come out, this little gasket. So that is trash now. This is that. All right, so a little trick that I found on the internet that I actually haven't used yet, is they say you can use oven cleaner to clean off all this grime. So since we're gonna be painting this, I want it to be super clean. You can see it's, this thing's seen better days. So, in order to get it really clean, I'm going to soak it in oven cleaner, starting with the bottom, and then I'll do the top. We'll let that work and we'll come back to it. I rinsed this thing off after uh, spraying the front with the oven cleaner, and it actually feels really clean. It doesn't feel very greasy. It doesn't look clean, per se, but um, it feels pretty good. All right, so I let the valve cover dry for a day, and what? Oh, it's not all the way dry. That'll be okay, we'll dry it. Uh, but underneath here, around this edge, um, in these holes, I'm just not gonna spray paint in there. Um, and then inside of here, I don't want paint to get in there either. Um, and then I won't, I won't paint around this either. So basically anywhere I don't want paint, I'm gonna put some tape on, and then we're gonna degrease it with some wax and grease remover, and then it'll be ready to be painted. All right, so I cleaned that off with wax and grease remover, and I used a toothbrush to kind of knock off some of the dirt that was stuck inside of all the little recesses in the valve cover. It's a pretty intricate piece, so I got it as clean as possible. I hope that it's gonna work and the paint will stick well. I'm using a black hammered finish because it's gonna match some more parts that I'm putting on my engine, uh, so I thought that'd be a cool way to kind of tie this into the new stuff. I'm going to start working on the valve cover gasket and the, I really need to find the name of this thing. The, uh, crank or the cam chain tensioner gasket and half moon gasket. Um, last time I did this job I just did the valve cover gasket and uh, I guess it worked but I still had a leak on the back of the engine and it's because I was leaking from these two gaskets that I did not replace. They're a little bit more involved. I've never done it so I'm going to be learning as I go but I'm going to help you guys as well. Something that uh, you're going to need for this is this tool. It's a special tool um, but it's a cam chain tensioner, so I'll show you how to use that. And uh, you do need this to do this job, um, specifically this job with the half moon gasket and the other one. But first, we've got to get the engine to top dead center before we can do any of this. I'm not sure if you're supposed to put it into service position in order to do this job. I feel like to get to the crankshaft, I'm going to have to do that. So I'm going to do that really quickly. It's really not a big deal, um, but that's just pulling the bumper off and taking this front core support and sliding it out a little bit. Here is a quick tip. I did they, it. You did it. Good job. They sell uh, little rods that screw into here so that you can slide the front clip off uh, without having any sort of issues, I guess. But I did it. What you? Yeah. Good job. I twisted it up like that. Cool. Yeah. Is it fixed? Uh -huh. Good job.
Um, but you can actually use the bumper screws, those screws that go up through the bumper right here. Anyway, they thread into the same hole. And then when you slide this out, they'll actually hold the weight of the front clip, so you don't have to have those special rods. So if you own an Audi, I definitely recommend doing this. Like just learn how to do it because it makes working on these cars so much easier. I'll show you what I mean. Now I have all this space to get in here and do whatever I need to do. Now when you do like the timing set and stuff, you actually pull this whole front section off and then you have access to... I did it, Daddy! You did it? That is so great. Anyway, you have all this uh, removed and you have full access to the front of the motor, which makes it a lot easier. Um, but yeah, so I've got a lot of room now. I'm going to turn this to top dead center and make sure all this stuff is lined up and then we'll be good to go for replacing that gasket in the back. I can see that turn over. Oh, you can see it turn over? Okay, stay right there. You tell me, tell me when it's at top dead center, okay? What? Can you do that? Top dead center. Top dead center. Ready? Is it there? Huh? What's it at? Is it at top dead center? Uh huh. Say top dead center. Top, top dead center. <laughs> cool. All right, so I used a wrench to rotate the engine to what I believe is top dead center. Um, there are two marks right up here in the gear. You can see that mark there and then that one there and then there's arrows here that uh, Point to those marks now from what I've seen online. They don't always line up perfectly as you can tell um, But as long as you have 16 links from camshaft to camshaft you should be good So I'm gonna count those to make sure and then we will install our tensioning tool get the gaskets back here And it's super tight. So it should be really frustrating and uh, not a lot of fun, but we're gonna do it um we're gonna do it for peace of mind. We're gonna do it to, to keep this engine from leaking anymore. So. 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Now I've heard you're supposed to run this thing down um, until it kind of just stops. So, so now we're gonna remove some bolts back here and that should give us some room to slide the old gasket out and slide the new one back in. That's the two hardest parts about this is that um, you have to be able to work in this small area back here, but also um, it's you don't actually get to pull a part off stick a gasket on and put a part on you have to Lightly pull the part up without moving the alignment dowels slide the gasket out slide the new one in and stick the part back on so um, You know, it'll be a little finicky. The good news is this isn't a BMW See what I did there So I was double checking everything and uh, I redid this whole process again. And when I did, I misplaced my chain tensioner and uh, well, I broke it. But it seems like this still works even with the broken tensioner. Um, I don't know, Ed, we'll see. <laughs> I've got a gap in here that I can, think I can get that gasket in and out of. So I'm gonna try it because uh, I don't wanna have to wait on another tensioner. The gasket back here. I wish I could show this to you guys, but I'm literally just feeling it. I know there are, okay, I feel the half moon too. Everything's directly underneath this kind of this place where the valve cover gasket comes up and over. It's right there. There we go. Oh, hey oh, hey oh. Nice. As you can see, oil is just like, ah, oh, that is so bad. Anyway, oil is just getting right past this gasket down the back of the engine, there's oil all over the back of the engine from that. Glad that we decided to do this so the next owner didn't have to 
deal with all that. So that's trash. And I guess I should go ahead and take the half moon out as well. It's so scary doing this, like, <laughs> without being able to see. I'm going to zoom out some. I, I want to say I just need to, like, this is the first job that I've done on this car that I felt was, like, truly German. <laughs> um, every Every German car I've owned has had these, like, it's, like, all about finesse, like, pulling on something and twisting something else and putting in the special tool created for this specific job kind of deal. Let's see if I find like a pick or something. Yep. Oh, there it goes. I didn't drop it in, but I definitely dropped it. Just get all that oil and... It's the result well. of the meal inside. <laughs> Is that good? <laughs> now we're gonna get that. All right, I got a bunch of Q-tips and clean up right there underneath that gasket. Okay, I wouldn't say it's clean enough to eat off of, but I think it'll work. This is the infamous half moon gasket. I would have shown you the one I pulled out, but it's in there somewhere. So let me try to get this in without dropping it. I'm gonna do a pull tip here. I take this microfiber cloth and I'm going to kind of stuff it down in there. So this has like a blue gasket adhesive on it. Figure out which way it goes. I'm just lining it up to make sure and those three bolt holes line up with this gasket so we know that's the way that it goes. I think we did it boys. All right, so now that that seal's taken care of, uh, I went ahead and rotated the crankshaft just to make sure everything seemed like it was still working right because I'm paranoid, but uh, it looks good. The seal's good, the half moon seal is, is where it's supposed to be, and uh, I think we're gonna be really good back there. So I tightened everything back up. Now we're gonna go around and clean up this mating surface right here, make sure it's super, super clean. Um, the valve cover's drying behind me, so by the time I get that done, the valve cover should be dry. I can clean the mating surface on that and go ahead and mount it back up. All right, so this valve cover dried for right at 24 hours. The paint actually takes 24 or 48 hours to cure, so I've got to give it another day. I didn't realize it took that long when I bought it, or I already bought a different brand, but you know, it's all good. Um, so, but at 24 hours, what I'm gonna do is anywhere where I've got like a machined surface, I'm going to sand off the paint, um, just to kind of add a little more detail to this. So I'm definitely gonna do it on these little like, I don't know what they are. They're like just machining marks or casting marks, whatever. Um, for each cylinder, I'm gonna do it on those. And then uh, it looks like that'll probably have me hitting these screw kind of places as well. So we may do those. It's really cold out here. It looks really nice, but it's really cold out here. All right, so it's done. You ready to see it? I'm going to preface with this. I was going to use automotive clear coat on it, like a 2K clear. I decided not to because if anything happens to it, if it's scratched or chipped or whatever, I want it to be really easy to repair so you can just reuse the paint that I used to repair it. It came out kind of a charcoal gray, which is actually really good because I like charcoal gray. I prefer it over black 100% of the time, um, and it's really awesome. I also added another part that I'm super stoked about. How cool is that? That look awesome. Now these are just hand tightened. I haven't actually cinched them down. I was just really excited and wanted to show you guys. Um, this is actually part of another video, but I'll go ahead and post the link to this in the description. This is a adapter plate for the 2.0T coils for the 1.8T AWM motor, and uh, they make them for all the all the 1.8Ts to let you run the better coil. And uh, not only does it work really well, it looks really awesome. So I am going to be doing a video on all of their ignition stuff, all of ECS's ignition stuff. So I'm basically replacing. The whole ignition system of this car um, but you'll see me install this and all that in that video but I just wanted to show this to you it's really cool it looks really awesome so we've got like charcoal red and silver and this looks so much better than the stock one it looks way better especially than it did when we started so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing installed get the gasket on and uh, we'll be good to go 
Also, if you haven't seen the video where I put this new lip on the bumper, go check it out. It's really cool. This lip is actually growing on me a lot. So I really love it now. I really love looking at the car, the way the car looks with the new lip on there. So go watch that video. It's really cool. It's a fun one to watch. And, uh, and I think it came out pretty great, honestly. So yeah, so there's nuts that go here, here, and there. And you can see ECS has got some provisions for that. That is beautiful. Yeah. That feels kind of supposed to. That's awesome. Now that is a valve cover. That looks very cool. I'm very excited about this. That looks awesome. Now you notice these aren't plugged in. Like I said, I'm still working on an ignition video. Um, so I'll be doing that. Uh, it'll be coming up this week. And then I'll get these plugged in. And this will all be taken care of. The only problem now is the rest of the engine bay kind of looks terrible. So <laughs> it all looks dirty and old and like melted plastic parts and all kinds of crazy stuff. But this is a good start. This is a start in the right direction. I really love how all these little silver accents came out. And this ECS adapter plate is very cool. It looks, it looks really good. It makes you want to show off this valve cover where, you know, the original one when it's stock just kind of looks, well, they made it to be hidden. So, <laughs> so now it's, it's made to be shown and it looks really good. So, really excited about it. I think it looks awesome. The valve cover gasket's replaced now. The half moon gasket's replaced. The cam, the cam chain tensioner gasket is replaced. So, this whole top end should be really good and leak proof. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this car, go check out the playlist of this car. I've got all kinds of videos on the stuff I've been doing on it. I'm getting it ready to be given away. So that's coming up very soon. I wish it was sooner, but uh, we're getting there. So uh, these are going to be happening because I'm getting it ready. I want to make sure it's in perfect shape whenever the new person that gets this car uh, drives it for the first time. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you soon.